Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with another Playtime with PM Artist Studio again. Um, now, I wasn't really going to turn the camera on for this one, I thought, well wait a minute, why aren't I? And I'll tell you what I'm planning to do and why I wanted to film this today. Okay, um, this month is August, uh, last month I did a trip to Chicago and on my trip to Chicago I bought some composition notebooks because I've not been able to find them in this country and if I order them online they're absolutely extortionate. I found these at 63 cents in Target or Target as some of my friends call it and it's funny because at the Jewel they were $1.84 uh, $1 which basically was three times the price so I went, you know what, go shopping in Target. Target has got them really cheaply. Next time I go, I'll be ordering some more. I was looking for the ones with grid, but I only found the wide ruled ones. And I did find the ones from Vietnam, which are the ones I heard are recommended. Um, so I'm happy at this. But anyway, the reason I'm doing this is I want to convert one of these into a new idea book for myself because I've got several idea books and I want to consolidate them all into one. But I don't want these as the cover. I want to use my own gel prints for covering the outside and the inside of the cover. So that's where this comes in. So let me put these by. So what I want to do is I'm going to make some 12 by 12 cardstock and then I'll use that cardstock to actually cover the inside and the outside of the covers of my um, composition notebook and it will probably become a video um, on my journaling for beginners playlist I'm not sure but this one I wanted to use PM Artist Studio because when I was in Chicago I ordered more stencils and masks to be delivered to my address in Chicago so I didn't have to pay shipping it's actually free shipping go PM love that just because it's in America so what are we using this time? So this one, I've never used this one before. I've seen it used, I love the results. It's the Sydney Pinwheels. I'm not sure why it's called Sydney Pinwheels. I mean, it's Sydney Pinwheels, that's all I know. So there's three different sizes. I like the pattern and design they've got within them. There's a little bit of, got that out of the way. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. And I'm also going to um, use my favorite colors or some of my favorite colors in the background. I am not intending to try and make four 12 by 12s in the same color. I'm just going to choose colors that maybe work together and I like. So, right, before we go any further, you may be watching this for the first time. This is PM Artist Studio, or this is, this is the details of them. So take a screenshot and that's basically their philosophy, their ethos. It actually tells you when they do the lives. Um, make sure you look into the lives. They do a fabulous job in the lives. These are all of the additional things you can sign up for, which will then get you further discounts on your future purchases. I've covered this one up because when you make one of your orders, you get a code that is actually date specific. So you can get 10% off your next order, which is a nice little thank you to have. So there you go. Now, um, PM Artist Studio do also have um, a Facebook group and the Facebook group is called Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. Fully recommend joining that group. Um, I think you've got to answer two questions to be allowed into the group, but that's just their way of actually sorting um, people out from spam people or you get what I mean. So, right. And for me, I'm using 12 by 12 cardstock and everyone keeps asking me where I get it. Well, I ordered online, I ordered it from this company, and this was the details, that's the grams, don't ask me what it is in pounds America please, because I have absolutely no idea. But what I did is I bought a couple of packs of these, and I'm working my way through them, in fact also a couple, I think I ordered five packs of them to be honest, which then gave me quite a chunk of 12 by 12s. But I've been known to use um, unwanted 12 by 12 craft card as well that comes in like a multi-pack and I'll just do it on the back of there. So, so that's what you're gonna ask me and that's that sorted. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start putting down some base colors. I'm gonna do the four of these. I'm gonna use, um, I've got my 12 by 12 
gel print, a gel plate here. I've got my 557, which I use as a palette because sometimes I put too much paint on here. Anyone who knows me knows I did that. But this gives me the opportunity to put it on here as a palette and then transfer it across. I'm using my little speedball roller. I, I love this little speedball roller. I do have a larger one, which I tend to roll across the back of papers when things are actually on the plate. The other things I've got is I've got some labels over there. And what I do with my labels, if I'm not rolling off onto paper, I roll off onto um, sheets of labels and then I might stamp on them or I might stick things to them. And then I use those as future um, pieces that I can use in my journals or my ephemera. I think that basically covers everything. I've got an air bubble under that, so if I can just remove that air bubble. Thank you. And thank you. The air bubbles are not going to be a huge problem, but I like to keep them to a minimum if I can. So let's get some colour down on this and see in which direction I'm going to go. I like blue, I like I like red, I like I like colour um, and I want to try and get some on here. I want to keep it quite light so you've seen me use this one before. This is just a mixed up bottle of acrylic paints from other other companies. Uh, I've just decanted into one bottle so can't tell you the brand of that. I will tell you brands when I can tell you brands. Um, let's see. I've got some white and maybe I want a touch of something darker in with that. Let's add a little bit of this. This again is another um, no name, no name brand. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the blues onto my palette there. The only reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to have big blue streaks. I don't mind the odd patches of white, um, but I just want to make sure I don't have big blue streaks. I keep saying I need to buy more white too. I keep forgetting about that. So I'm going to get my white on the go. I'm not particularly fussy. I don't want it all absolutely perfect. And I'm going to pick up my colors and I'm going to add them into the mix. I could have maybe two tall, two pulls off this, which is quite likely because there's quite a bit of paint on my palette here. So I'm just building up a background to print upon. So um, while I'm doing this, so who are PM Artist Studio? Well, P stands for Patricia, M stands for Mariah. Patricia is the mother, Mariah is the daughter, Patricia is a retired art teacher, which is fabulous because that means Patricia's got a lot of knowledge. I'm loving how that turned out. I wonder whether I can get a little bit along that edge. Yeah, just picked up a little. Let's put that up there. Um, yes, Patricia is an ex-art teacher, which means that Patricia generously shares a lot of her knowledge of products, of processes, um, wonderful. Um, I like her dry sense of humour, I like her wit and her sarcasm, um, but most of all I appreciate that she's an artist with a lot of talent to share. Um, her daughter Mariah is actually an illustrator who works with computer software. So, oh, I need to get some tissue paper in a minute. Um, so, Mariah has a more, how can I say this without insulting anyone, has a more technologically up-to-date approach to artistry. I think that was quite politically correct of me to say it in that way, and I'm sure that no one is going to be insulted by that. So there's another one that's almost ready to go. Now I've got some stuff on here. I just want to bray that off and get that off there as well. So what are my other colours going to be? Right, um, I said I like blues, I like, well I like most colours, so I'm going to go with a touch of blue. What's this one? Um, this is Bluebird by Americana, which is Deco Art. Um, I will tell you the brands, or show you the brands, if, if it is a legitimate um, bottle I'm using. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes um, as I've said, I'll actually mix bottles up. So this one is Sky Blue Americana Deco Art as well. I don't favour any particular brand or any particular colour. I might have my favourites. 
Um, I think like everyone I have my favourites, but I can't say I, I would promote a single brand over another brand. Unless it was very, very, very specific project. So let's just get some white down on this plate again. And bring in and dash in some of the blue colour. As you can see, I'm not caring about this. Um, purely because it's only the base layer. Um, try not to over grey it though, Griffiths, because you'll end up mixing the paint all into one colour. So. so there you go. So thank you for all of the lovely comments um, that I received on last month's play with PM Artist Studio. That was nice to see. We did we did the Daisy collection. I do like the Daisy collection. Right, I've got enough on there, which I knew I would have. Um, so yes, we did the Daisy collection, and apparently you like the Daisy collection as well. So that was sweet, nice to hear. Um, and quite a lot of you went over and subscribed to um, PM Artist Studio um, YouTube channel and joined the group. So I was very happy at that. So um, it's probably worth saying here, guys, I'm not paid anything for promoting this. I am just using um, my videos to promote a small family business so I totally believe in. And I love what they do. I legitimately love what they do. Um, let's try a bit of burnt sienna. Now, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to put stuff down on here and then I'm going to come in with a bit of tissue and lift the majority of it back off. But I'm going to use um, the stencils or masks in their truest form. And I'm going to put them over this painted layer and then lift up anything that is exposed. Hopefully I've got enough on here. I'm trying to use less on my plate. I'm really bad at putting too much on my plate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cluster um, the pinwheels towards the edge and I'm doing it so I've got one little bit almost overlapping the edge purely because that helps me lift them up because otherwise I'm digging underneath with my thumbnail or fingernail and that's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to cluster them up there. Don't know what that is, but it'll come up in a minute. Now, any tissue paper I, I use, and I do use tissue paper, and I'm going to grab, I've got some spare strips here where I've taken off the edges of other things. Um, any tissue paper I'm using that I print upon will actually get used in collage, because as you all know, I do collage a lot, so I like it for modern designs. I like using it in that way. I've actually been working on larger projects currently where there's um, a need for quite a lot of tissue paper. So I've been using it. Now I'm pushing down my fingers because what I'm trying to do is I want to get the tissue to go through the stencil or the mask to meet the surface underneath. And by pressing down, I'm actually making the surface underneath come up to meet it. Now I like using tissue paper because I can pretty much see that it's printed onto it because it's transparent. Now this is where I use my bigger brayer just to give a bit of even pressure over this. Now there is a piece of equipment out there called a Baron which is B-A-R-E-N and it's a bit like a doorknob with a flat surface which is polished, which you can polish over the back. I don't have one of those, but that's fine. I don't need one of those. Um, I don't need one yet anyway, um, because I like using my, my big brayer. Um, PM Artist Studio are working with somebody to actually manufacture those. So it's a case of watch this space. I don't know what that was, a bit of rubbish. Um, to, it was a case of watch this space because it may become a new product on their website. And they do sell things other than masks and stencils, guys. If you're in America, I would say it's probably easier to order from them because if you're ordering internationally, you will have shipping to pay. So I'm going to take this tissue paper off and then I'm going to peel these masks back and then I'm going to put one of the backgrounds on here. Now, I'm going to have to work reasonably quickly because it's a warm day here and things are going to dry. So we'll look at the tissue paper after I've removed it, okay? If I can just take that off there. 
make sure it's back in shot. Um, when you're lifting the UPO off, and UPO is the product that the stencils and masks are made of, I believe it's £74 UPO and it's 100% polypropylene. Polypro Wait, where's it written down? I can never say this thing. Okay, where are we up to? Okay, cut from £74 UPO, 100% polypropylene synthetic material. I like it. Um, I know we're used to seeing plastic, clear um, stencils and masks. I like this because first of all they're white and I can find them on my work surface normally. Um, secondly, uh, I can wipe them, I can wash them, I can soak them. They are quite tough but I wouldn't go tearing and pulling them around obviously but they are quite tough. Um, these have got colour on them. Would I wash this off? Probably not. I mean, if I was using a lot of paint, um, these smaller pieces could eventually get filled in. I would keep an eye on that, but I'm not worried. Right, well, that's just sitting there thinking about itself. There you go. So there's a nice bit of tissue paper, which I will use in the future for one of my um, collages. Now hopefully I'm not out of shot. I've got this quite tight when I'm looking through my iPad. So literally my iPad sees to there, there and there. So I'm hoping I'm not moving but I thought you'd appreciate being a little closer to it. So let's put this to one side and let's see what we pulled off here. It's really stuck itself down. There you go. So it's cleaned off the plate beautifully and it's given me that. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely love that. Right, I'm going to do that again, but next time I'm going to do it with a different colour because obviously I don't want everything to be absolutely duplicated every single time. So I've got another one of the blues, right? I did like it in the Burnt Sienna, but I think I actually want to go even brighter. And I've got this Deco Americana. This is bright orange, and I believe it is bright orange too. Exactly the same thing again. Um, I'm going to group the the pinwheels in a different way on the surface this time. That looks like I might just have put a bit too much on there, but if I have, I can always bray it off, or maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't. Um, if you have too much paint on your jelly plate when you're doing stuff like this, the danger is that stuff could slide around as you're trying to clean it off. So just be a little careful of that. I try to make sure that I don't have too much on. But as I said, I'm notoriously bad for judging the amount that I should have on there. So there you go, let's put that down. Right, let's do these in slightly different way than I did last time. I'm trying to do it so that I don't I don't duplicate a pattern. That'll be fine. Right, where's that tissue paper gone? tissue paper over the top. We will do different methods in, in, in a little while. As soon as I've got um, the foundations down, and I class this as like the foundations, as soon as I've got this all sorted, we'll then start playing around with some different ways to use these. I just want to get a good coating. As I said, I'm, I'm trying to create some background papers or background cards to turn into a cover. So I don't want the covers to be so busy because I'm probably going to put a label on the front of the cover to tell me what it is. Um, Idea Journal Volume 1, 2, 3 or however I'm any doing. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't make it look so busy. I want to appreciate the artistry that's gone into creating all these. So let's take that off of there. Now, um, as far as the PM Artist Studio lives, and they have them three times a week, which is Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, unfortunately, because I'm in Britain and I, I, I work a lot, um, I sometimes can only get to the Sunday one. But you know what? That, that's fine. I, I can deal with that. Um, I try to pop into the others when I can, but it's such a lovely community because as you're doing a live, um, normally Patricia is creating something in each of the live streams or Mariah is creating something in each of the live streams. They choose topics that everyone wants to talk about and 
it's a brilliant time to be able to actually ask questions of someone in the industry, um, whether it's computer software illustration work, which I'm sure Mariah would be quite willing to talk about. Probably not able to demonstrate anything within that because obviously the setup is more for physical art and not software art. And then you've got Patricia who will answer anything that she can and take on ideas and do challenges on the spot. If there's a product they're wondering how it works and they already have it there, then that's great. They have a great amount of knowledge within the Facebook group and that amount of knowledge is willingly shared. I like that. That was a good choice. And I like the fact that I'm picking up little bits as I go along. My aim is to get rid of all the whites. But when you look at the covers of one of those composition notebooks, I probably only need about that much for each cover. But all of the rest will certainly not go to waste. This, let's see. We've got some permanent magenta here. It says it's a transparent. That's OK with me. We're going to do this one more time. Hopefully you're not bored. Um, my aim is not to bore. My aim is to hopefully inspire and share these wonderful products with you. So let's get this down. When we've done this, we can then play around with different things on the place. So yes, um, their lives normally last two hours. Well, it depends on what sort of role P is on. I've actually seen one that did go for three hours. Um, there was plenty of coffee in, on, in the room, so I think I think that's what kept P going. And she does, P is one of those creative bodies that uh, she just completely and utterly gets lost within the process. And I fully understand that because when I'm creating, say, digitals for my um, Etsy store, I will sometimes look up and go, wait a minute, I've just been doing this for how many hours? Um, and I tend to do that with video work as well. I tend to look down and not realise that maybe I've been doing this and I should have gone to bed several hours ago. Um, but I think all creative people are like that. Uh, you just get so engrossed in the process and that's magical. I love it. So as you can see, I put spare bits of tissue down at the edges just to pick up the edges. I don't really want to build up a paint on the edge of my gel plate if I can afford it because what will happen is that crusted edge will start tearing paper eventually. So I tend to I tend to try and control it a fair bit. Just done that let's give this a bit of a press with my my big brayer. Now I'm using um what am I using? I'm using acrylic paints here. You could use inks, you could use watercolour paints, you could use any medium that you know is safe to use upon your gel plate. Um, and there are several, several different products you could be using. And there are some fabulous gel print, mono print artists out there. And I fully advise you just if you're interested in doing this um, jelly printing or gel printing, or sometimes called mono printing, I would say make sure you search that topic on the internet because as I said there are some absolutely fabulous artists out there and if you join the group the mixed media uh, makers of mixed media art and artist group there are several really talented well I think most people on that group are really talented to be honest um, and you can pick up hints and tips and follow people's recommendations and find a style that works for you Although I would say when you find a style that you really love working with, don't ever stick to it 100%. Don't lock yourself out or block off the opportunity to learn a different style along the way. Um, I love doing that. I love, absolutely love finding out new art forms. There you go. Loving that. Um, I think I want a sort of dark red. So I've got Tuscan Red here. And this is Tuscan Red Deco Art Americana. And we're doing this process one more time. I know you're all going, really, you said that five minutes ago. Well, OK, it's fine. I promise you, after this one, we will look at maybe a different way of using these. And I'm not going to just use these. I might use a couple of other techniques as well. So let's get this rolled out. 
Now, um, what would I recommend for a beginner? Um, I would say if you're interested in doing this form of art, um, gel plates come in very many different sizes and they come in very many different price brackets as well. Um, the 12 by 12 is the biggest I've ever purchased, um, although I do know there's bigger ones besides that, but that's just a little bit beyond my beyond my pay grade as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're just a little more expensive than I'm willing to pay out. So you, you need to purchase what is according to your own style. Also, I find I would very rarely need to do something bigger than a 12 by 12. Uh, sorry, paper's rustling. I've got tissue paper falling all over the floor here behind me. And let's get a strip and put it across there. And I guess I've got a little bit there as well, so let's pop that on there. Um, so yes, purchase as per according to your budget, but I would say by the five by seven, like this is a five by seven. I can do lots of ephemera on this. I can do postcards on this. I can make panels. If you're a card maker or a journaler, you could use this quite easily. And I would say that's probably a really useful size for someone who's beginning, starting out. Um, once you've got the hang of it and you feel you want to go further, then yes, invest in large. I mean, I've got What's my other plate? I've got one plate I think is a 10 by 12. I use that one for making signatures for my journals because a journal to me is pretty much a folded piece of A4 paper. So I have enough room within that. I also will use, um, I've got an eight by, have I got an eight by six? I think I've got an eight by six. Um, and then I've got a couple of what I call novelty ones, which are maybe a two inch round or three inch round or a hexagon or a square. Um, I bought them. I don't use them. They're sat there. Um, when I first bought them, I thought they were wonderful. Used them a few times and then pretty much never used them again. So, But it could be the thing that you find that is most useful to you. So have, buy, if you're going to start this, by the five by seven is my first recommendation. And then once you've actually paid around a while, um, and if you've decided it is something you want to do, then consider buying a bigger plate. Because the thing is, you can do small stuff on a big plate, you can't do big stuff on a small plate. Also, PM Artist Studio in July, I want to say it's about July the 12th, something like that. Um, they did a live where they went back to basics with gel printing and the whole live was about helping you understand what gel printing is, what what's helpful, what's not helpful, um, some of the terminology and they did an absolute wonderful two hour stream. I might try and remember to add it to the description box which is a little gravy or when you see the description there might be the words read more. Now, in there, I'm going to put a lot of links for you to be able to find PM Artist Studio. And if I remember, which I'm a man of a certain age, and maybe I, don't, I won't remember, I'll try and put a link to that live because seriously, that was a really good one. Well worth working, uh, watching. Some great questions came up from the live feed. Some great questions came up in the comments after the live feed. And you'll be able to watch it back. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to watch. So yeah, they answered a lot of questions for a lot of people. And it was just a really good resource. And then I believe Mariah has created a blog post from that um, to help even further. Right, so we've got this going on. So we've now got four variations on a theme so that's one having the thoughtful moment guys um i think i'm going to just put some circles onto here first of all now there are there are things you can use but you know what the inside of a roll of tape okay this this held washi tape so i'm going to use this today and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to stamp onto some of these using just some paint and i think i'm going to use purple um, this is just a purple Windsor Violet. It's it's a transparent, doesn't bother me but it's transparent. I'm just going to be stamping um, some paint on here. Just want you to see that it doesn't have to be 
all all special equipment to be able to do this so I'm just mixing my purple around there just so I've got a reasonably early, um, even layer I'm going to give a little bit of a twisting action and I'm just going to come in and put put some of circles on here now I'm going to put stick to five to each um, print uh, for no other reason than I could get carried away and actually stick loads of circles all over the place and then it makes no sense whatsoever as to why they're there. Another thing I like to do is by putting that circle it's now linked those together and so it's one big design instead of elements floating around within the design. Stuck down for goodness. There you go. Right. Now I've got that. And all I can do is I'm just going to wipe the edge of that off because that's where the build. And I can put that to one side and I can use it time and time and time again. Where else would it be? It'd be in the trash. It's not in the trash anymore. I'm using it. So I'm now going to come in and I'm going to take this purple and I'm going to put it onto this plate because I want to, oops, sliding all over the place, I want to actually use it in another manner. And as we said, it is a transparent, so a lot of that will depend on how thickly you apply it. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a transparent. And as far as the, the paint pot goes, it says it's transparent, which is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I call a kissing technique. So basically, I'm going to take this, I'm going to look for any white areas, and I'm literally going to touch them down. And what it will do is it will just pick up hints of areas I don't mind that I'm, I'm looking for little bits of interest on things there's a bit up there just just bits so it just gives that bit of visual something like I've got all of this here that needs to be gone in my opinion um, another bit there it's just a technique I very often use just to introduce maybe a bit of color or if I'm doing something steampunky, I'll maybe use that to add a little bit of grunginess to the edge of something. And this, using the one colour to do this, will unify um, the design slightly because then there'll be this one core technique and colour going through everything. This is drying on the plate, so I need to get a shimmy on. I'll get a bit in that gap. There you go. Bit down there. And a bit across there. And a bit by there. So all of these are just basic techniques. So as you can see, I've just added a bit of grungy interest to each of these as I've gone along, which is completely fine. Now I do have stuff left on my um, mat here. I'm going to just grab. Let's see. Let's get this piece of yellow and see whether anything will come off. It may or may not come off. Um, it was drying, so therefore I may not get much. I got hardly anything, but that's totally fine. I can use it in another way should I choose to. Okay, I lifted some off the palette, which is fine. Okay. I don't need to use the whole plate for this, so I just want to see roughly... So pretty much three quarters of a plate of white will be enough. And I think what we're going to do is we'll work down the centre, but I won't necessarily go to the edges. Um, I'll just keep the white in the middle. Um, because it, this is one of those techniques that um, I'm dabbing it down. I'm not actually putting the whole sheet of card directly onto it. So I want to put this in the middle. I'm not using a lot of pressure, I'm just letting it roll with the weight of the brayer. So I'm going to pop these down on here. Um, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter who. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this and I'm going to bend it and press down. And what I'm aiming to do is to pick up pieces of designs. I'm not looking for patches. See this? I'm looking for interesting shapes. So I think that's enough on there. 
and I'm looking to place those interesting shapes of white in areas that potentially have nothing else in them. See, that's just a really interesting piece of design that that's just picked up. I like doing these kind of techniques because it gives me more versatility for the design. Just another way of using it. There you go, I've got more of that on there. Let's add a little bit more now. The longer it's sat, the, long, uh, the less time you've got for the paint because it's drying. So stick that. We'll take a look in a moment. I'm just a little conscious now. Things are potentially drying on me. I want to make sure I've utilised as much as I can from this. A little bit more there. And just have a look at the others to make sure that I've used as much as I... I do a little bit more on that one. And I think a bit more in that area would do, do me some good as well. So we've managed to put some white on this. I do think now I need to start adding drama to this. Um, I do want to use... Oh, I don't stick. Oh, it's stuck. Okay, I've got a little bit of bit stuck there. I'm going to just remove that little bit. That's what happens when you don't think about where you're stacking them. Okay, I've saved that. The torn piece is actually on the back of here. So that was a lucky save. So I'm going to come in. I need to put some drama on here. I want to add something textural to this. And I'm wondering. Oh, right. Um, okay, this is another PM Artist Studio mask. I need to quickly have a look to see what it's called because I'm really bad at remembering things. So bear with me, I'm just flicking through my selection. Right, it's called Won Wonky Net Mask. Well, there you go, I can show it to you. Wonky Net Mask. Um, wasn't my intent to use it in this one, but I think I like where that's going and what I want to do with it. So let's lift that up because it's now stuck down to my plate. Um, I want to put a bit of black into this and I want to put a bit of something a bit more dramatic. So I'm going to move the plate out the way and we're going to work on individual prints at this point and I'm going to use black. So my aim is I'm going to use my wonky net mask. That's not an easy thing for me to remember and I'm going to use black acrylic paint. Okay, this is just um, black tie deco art Americana. And if I get it open it'll be a dream come true. This one's almost out actually, although it's almost out now. So let's put that that way up and let's soak. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it onto my brayer. I don't want to overload my brayer. I do want it on there though. I don't want too much. And then I'm literally going to put this down and I'm going to brayer through it. Now I know it's not going to give me perfect grids, but what it's going to do is it's going to give me that sort of effect. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stuff that's giving me almost a bit of grunginess to this. See what I mean? It's not perfect. I could turn this over now and imprint it the other way, but I don't want to. That's not, not the look I'm going for. But I just want to get a little bit. If you want to put it all the way through, you need to put this onto... Um, the gel plate. But as I said, I just want, I just want something like that. Sometimes your mind knows what you want, but you struggle about putting it into words, or at least I do. Now I could sponge this through. I could get a sponge and dab this onto there, but not my intent. This is. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that's incomplete, yet a layer of interest. See, it's just giving me where the paint is pushing down at the outlines. It's just giving me a little something. See, this, this is what I'm looking for. It's almost like a tiled effect. Get some on the go here. I'm trying not to do it 
in the same place on each panel, which is slightly diff difficult because I'm OCD and that means that I like, I like things regimented, I like things in the same place, I like things lined up. So for me to do um, stuff that's random is, is difficult, let's just put it that way, it's difficult. Let's see, that's nice and subtle, I'm liking that. See, that's, that's where I'm going with all of this. And one last one, and then we might have to use up the remainder of this on something else. Well, actually, I might be able to demonstrate how it works from a plate. And I think by there. So you don't always need to get a perfect impression of these guys. I mean, use it to give you... Oh, that shit, that's quite nice. It got even less there and that just became dotty. So let's just show you what I mean. So if I had this um, on my gel plate, and I'll go turn this over so I've got the clean side up. Let's get... So if I then press this on there, see, I then get the grids or whatever you wish to call it. So I'll just give that a bit of a press there. Now the other thing this has done, now see that's just given that interest. The other thing this has done, because we had this on here, it's now left all of that on there and just touch it down with that kissing action. What that's doing is just lifting away all of that black. Oops. See what I mean? So it gives it another layer of grunginess. Quite like that, it's building. It definitely needs more stuff, but that's building. So, so this was, oh my gosh, what was it called? I've already forgotten. Wonky Net Mask. There you go, that's that one. I should have planned that a little bit ahead, shouldn't I? I didn't think I was going to be using that one. Right, definitely time to get the damp cloth out. And we're about five minutes away from finishing, which is perfect. So where are we up to? Right, I think we'll take a little look at this and then add one more element. And then that one more element means that we will be finished. So already I've got some really lovely things going on, layers upon layers upon layers. And that's exactly what I like to produce when I'm doing jelly printing. I want all of those different layers in there. I'm not going to stack them on top of each other because some of them might still be wet with the black. See, I'm loving that, absolutely loving that. Let's move that one over to one side and slide that in there. Now, I am very nervous about destroying these at this point because it would be so easy to destroy these. Um, I need to think about what colour I want to add. Now... I, I like on the final thing to do something really dramatic, but we've already done white, we've already done black. I think I would like to add maybe some copper to this. And I think copper because it'll give it that element of, um, how do I say it, shine? <laughs> if that's the word I'm looking for. Um, I've got this little sample of bronze, which I've never used. I don't think I've used it. Um, I normally use the copper, but I like this. It looks looks very similar to copper to me. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do one of the previous techniques where I put this down and I actually put over the top the masks. And then I'll lift off the excess with the stencils and then I'll place these down one at a time and then that will finish finish the whole process off. Now, I know I don't have to go all the way to the edges of of the board for this so that's good i can just 
utilize sections of this. Doesn't matter if things overlap, that's not a problem. Um, the only time it becomes a problem I found is if I'm putting two or three layers over each other and then those two or three layers actually build up so much that then the paint seeps underneath them. That, that's when I find I have a problem, but it doesn't happen that often. So, right, again, pressing down to get that embedded. Now, I could do another version. I could have laid these down and then rolled over the top of them with the paint to push the paint down through the apertures. But that means that the whole background would also be that copper colour or bronze colour is in this instance. And then if I then put that onto my prints, it would actually mask them. It would just cover up everything I've already done. And I'm really happy with everything I've already done, so I don't want to lose it. Right, let's take these off of here. Or off here, not off of. I don't know where that bit of bad English came from. Right, there's that bit of tissue paper. Lovely bit of tissue paper. That'll be used for something in the future. Right, having to move quite quickly. Now, I'm not sure how much it's going to show until I do the first one. So we'll find out. It could be that the copper isn't dark enough. And if it's not dark enough, no foul. I'll just do a different colour. Actually, I don't mind that. It's just subtly enough. I think I'm not going to mess around anymore. I think I'm going to stick using the copper because I like the sheen it's got, that little bit of shine. So, and I like the look of that anyway. Remember, I'm going to be choosing a section of this to use. I won't be using the whole piece. So that one's done. We'll take a final look at them afterwards, guys. So let's put do that whole process again. I think this will give me an opportunity to use up this little tube. I bought a set of this size of the metallics um, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to try them all out to find out which ones I really liked. And I really, really liked the copper. I didn't realise the bronze was almost exactly the same colour, however. I mean, I could probably interchange them and nobody but me would know. So another bit of tissue paper. Let's just use this one. This is another bit from another bit of play I did earlier on. As I did say, I think all of my tissue papers get used in jelly printing. So, just as we're winding up the last processes, um, PM Artist Studio are based in Texas. Um, I'd like to say I could tell you where. I want to say it's something like Sassy or Salsy or... I don't know. I don't know Texas. I've been through Texas several times. Um, I've been there several times, um, but never in the area they are, funnily enough. So, <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know where they actually are. But yes, yeah, so they're based in Texas. Um, they do ship internationally. Although, as I said, that's now interesting, isn't it? As I said, if you're going to order internationally, remember you're going to incur some serious shipping, which is where. If you were to watch their lives and actually join part of their groups or programs and get yourself some of those extra discounts, it would really help offset your shipping costs because um, <clears throat> I tend to be in the States two or three times a year. Well, I haven't been lately, obviously, because of um, the whole COVID thing. And I did my first trip in... July and I'll be there at least twice next year if not three times next year and being able to actually get the shipment sent to um, the place of a staying and pick it up there meant that I actually ended up with free shipping which does make a lot of difference see that's nice I've not obliterated it but I've got that sheen to it I'm liking that that's cool right two more of those go I've still got stuff on here mind there's that is that bronze gone? Well, I think I might try and put this one down the side more. 
So yes, considerations like saving yourself some PMP, uh, saving yourself a discount really does help when it comes to dealing with PMP guys. So something to bear in mind, um, you may not think like that, but if you can save 15 to 20% on your order, that's a big saving. I mean, it is a big saving in the long run. So I'm gonna do this one down the side purely because I know the next piece I'm going to do has some side detail that I'd like to use. Let's see if I've got, got a bit of yellow tissue here. And um, this is just packaging. This this was on, on an order that arrived maybe from Etsy, something like that. Um, I save it all, I recycle it when I can. Um, packaging tissue or gift tissue is not the most robust in the world as you can see by the hole there but I am just lifting this off with it and I am going to be using it for um, collage afterwards so it's going to be torn up no matter what I do but as you can see I can use it and I'll still have a piece left to work with let's do that now just show you where I want to place this is it this one this is this one I'm thinking of placing this that way down so just so we know what I'm intending to do. No, it's this side down. See, that's what happens when they don't focus. And then we've just got one more to go and then, then I'll be happy. There you go, so I've got the shine down there. So I have options now when I cut this. Do I use this with the with bronze there, that way, whichever way I wish it to be. So that's another good one done. Now this one, I'm not sure that I'm, I don't want a lot on this one because there is a lot on this one. So I think I'm gonna try and do it a little thinner this time and maybe not press as hard. There's only about one or two squeezes left in there. It's amazing how far one of those little tubes will actually go. So. Uh, these are all getting very, very sticky with paint. And another bit of tissue. Oh, got some silver tissue this time. And our silver and bronze go together. So, well, hopefully I haven't found this boring, guys. I try, I try to keep things to approximately an hour. If I can keep them less than an hour, I do. Um, but that's not always possible, obviously. Um, and I try to keep it as interesting as I can. Lift that out of there, that down there. Right, let's take that one off. Um, when you're taking your stencils off, by the way, or masks, don't let them touch each other when they're drying, because they'll just marry each other. They'll they will get so so engrossed with each other that you'll never get them apart again. So yeah, don't let them dry touching. Not a good thing, because you will end up with them glued together for life. I suppose if you soaked them in water, they'd probably pull apart, but not something I've tried. There you go. Right, let's clear the decks just slightly. Let's get rid of this and this. And let's let these dry a second, just while I go over stuff one more time. Okay, one more time. PMRC Studio, this is your chance to take a screenshot, although all the links will be in the little box of the description box, as many links as I can possibly put in there. These are all the ways you can earn extra discounts. You would get 10% on your second order. So when you put an order in, you'll have a code come through. So there's at least 10% to be saved on your order. We've been working with Sydney Pinwheels. Um, we did work briefly with Wonky Net mask but this was the one i wanted to feature this week uh, this month's so sydney pinwheels which you've seen me using they're these lovely delicate pinwheels they're, they're pieces of art in themselves to be honest with you i'm going to put those there so i don't actually stick them to anything else 
So there you go. And my aim was to actually create four pieces of cardstock that I can then cover my new composition notebook in so I can then turn that into a new ideas journal. So these are the four pieces we created. So hopefully that's well within screen. Lots of interest, like the light colour. I like the fact that when I tilt it, it catches the light. Loving that one. So we did a blue and we did this sort of teal-ish colour or turquoise colour. So it means I can have maybe the teal on the front, the back and the blue on the insides. Depends on which way I wanted it around. Um, I'll make that decision when it comes to actually using them. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, we talked about PM Artist Studio. I fully support them, guys. Please go over and support them. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. Join the group, which is Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. And look in on one of the lives. They're absolutely funny. Uh, you'll find me there. I, I'm, I will be there. I can almost guarantee I'm there on a Sunday live. I try and pop in briefly on the Tuesday and the Thursday, but because of the time change, not always the easiest one for me to capture. So um, I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm signing off till next time. Take care, guys. Bye.